Thank you so much for your patience. Right now I'm currently transitioning. No, not that kind of transitioning. I'm just moving offices. I know that this video might not be as polished as some of my other ones. Please bear with me. I appreciate your patience as I get all of this sorted out. But enough about that. Today we're going to be talking about the MacBook Pro 14 inch. It's the M3 base model. And I'm going to be using this as sort of my main workhorse. I've been using a MacBook Air and it's been phenomenal. But I'm a greedy tech YouTuber that just wants more. And I want to give you guys a rundown of it so far and some of the things I like and maybe some areas that I'm like, eh, not so much. In this era of Apple Silicon, you really don't need as much power as you think you do. That's what I'm coming to find. If you're using the Adobe suite like Premiere and After Effects exclusively instead of Final Cut and Motion, then you probably will need more power to be clear. But I've recently made the switch to basically all first party Apple apps for my productivity where applicable. I'm just blown away by the optimization and the performance that I get. Even on a base model MacBook Air M2, I can pretty much do everything I need to do. Today's sponsor is Remotely, a next generation remote access tool. It supports 4K at 60 frames and it even supports HDR. It's low latency, which makes it great for PC gaming, and it's supported on all recent versions of Windows. It supports session recording and voice chat, and it allows you to mark up web pages. It also has a very active community forum where you can post up your issues and get solutions in the same day. All transmitted data is encrypted using AES-256, so it is extremely secure. There's a strong 14 sign connection ID, which makes it virtually impossible to guess. You also have the option option to brand the quick support tool with your company brand and logo. And there's an advanced mobile application that allows you to use your tablet as a terminal. And currently there's free licensing for both business and personal usage. So you have nothing to lose. I've been using this software now for a couple weeks and I'm very happy with it. And I highly recommend you guys check it out. Again, big thanks to Remotely for sponsoring this video. Check them out at the link in the description below. Now, upon unboxing this machine, one of the first things that I noticed instantly was just how premium everything felt. That's pretty par for the course with virtually any Apple product, this is the best built laptop you can buy. It's not an exaggeration. It's not a hyperbole. I, I promise you that in terms of build quality, you will be hard pressed to find anything that comes close to Apple's build quality. Everything just feels incredible. The solid aluminum body, the attention to detail, it's unparalleled. Nobody else does it quite like Apple. This machine is on the heavier side. It's chunky. It's the ideal compromise between performance and portability. Remember that when you get a thicker chassis, you also get better cooling and that helps the performance in the long long run. So it's a trade-off I'm at least willing to make 10 times out of 10. Upon setting this machine up, the first thing I notice is that everything is super snappy, super quick. I really can't emphasize just how spoiled we are with Apple Silicon. And I think the base model is going to be enough for quite literally 98% of people. A nice thing about this MacBook Pro from previous editions is you get that two gigabyte of RAM spec increase. More RAM is always a good thing. I didn't really have any complaints with 16 gigabytes of RAM, but the 18 is nice. It's also worth noting that just because Mac OS is using all all the memory. It doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to or that you're pressed for memory. It's more important to look at the memory pressure and overall performance versus just opening up Activity Monitor and going, oh my god, 15 gigabytes of RAM is being used. Mac OS will do that. If the memory's there, it's going to use it. That's not indicative of anything. And a lot of people know this, but I think a lot of people also don't and they kind of freak themselves out. So don't worry. Look at the memory pressure. If it's green, then just enjoy your machine. If it's green, enjoy your machine. <laughs> I'm getting all day battery life as well. I never really worry about battery with either this machine or my MacBook. Air. I just know that they're going to last all day if they're charged, even if I'm putting it through some really intensive tasks like video or photo editing or software development. Apple has their new anodization process, which does minimize the fingerprints, but let's be very real and very transparent here. There are fingerprints on the machine. They will still show up. I have an Apple polishing cloth that I use to wipe it down. That helps my OCD and eliminates the problem completely. So there is a solution, but just be aware that yes, this shows fingerprints more than say the silver or even the space gray would, but it's a trade-off I'm willing to make every time because the color is is just so gorgeous. Now, when I compare this to my Mac Mini M2, my MacBook Air, M3. I don't really see any difference with any of these CPUs. They're all super fast. They're all basically instant. Whenever I'm working in a video editor or writing code, everything just works so fluently and so smooth. There's no hiccups or hangups or anything like that. So I can't really say that the M3 Pro is worth it over just the basic M3, at least for my workflow. But 
I do have a pretty demanding workflow and I think that if I'm doing okay, a lot of people will too. So that's kind of nice, again, that we're in that era where, you know, the performance isn't even really noticeable because previous generations and also binned versions of the chips are, are still so incredible that we don't see that difference. One thing I noticed about using the MacBook Pro versus the MacBook Air is that I do feel the edges dig into my wrists a little bit. I actually remember this being an issue with my older M1 MacBook Pro that I daily drove for almost two years. And yeah, it seems worse now, but I think that's just because I've been using the MacBook Air. I don't think it's going to be a big problem for most people. It certainly isn't for me, but I did notice it and it is kind of annoying. A lot of the time I actually end up using this MacBook Pro just with my studio display, so it's a non-issue, but just be aware that if you're coming from a thinner laptop, it might catch you off guard a little bit. I can't say that it really deters me too much from using it. After a while, I kind of forget it's happening, but you feel it. It is there and it's not really an issue with the MacBook Air just because it's a little bit more low profile. One of my favorite things going from the MacBook Air to the MacBook Pro is that the MacBook Pro has an objectively better keyboard. I don't know what it is, it just feels like there's a little bit more key travel and it also feels like the keys are a little bit softer when you bottom out and it just feels like a more it just feels like a more satisfying typing experience versus the macbook air which feels great definitely one of the best keyboards but that's the difference it's one of the best keyboards versus in my opinion the best keyboard the best typing experience that you can get on a laptop time will tell how the space gray holds up i'm a little bit nervous about it although i've had the midnight for a while and there haven't been any issues aside from the minor fingerprints but i really hope that this doesn't scuff and mark up as easily as I'm thinking it will because you know in two years time there will be dents and scratches and obviously when you get something in this color it will be more noticeable so I hope it's durable I hope it holds up and I hope that the scratches that I eventually do get don't make me hate the damn thing but we'll, we'll see and listen a couple of scratches builds character it's not really that big of a deal but yes that will bother the hell out of me and I'll probably toss myself off the 11th floor so this has just been my experience so far I hope to spend more time with it and bring you guys another review down the road but right now I'm very satisfied and I think I'm actually going to keep it I'm gonna have two MacBooks which is crazy I that's really not smart financially I should really revisit that idea but I like both of them so much that I don't really want to be without the other we'll see how that goes but I really like the MacBook Pro I think it's stunning and the space black is beautiful and I just yeah I can't recommend this laptop enough that's gonna do it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike let me know what I can improve on in the future and uh, yeah till next time